Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than we've done thus far. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at a library called Dart T, which actually implements an architecture that is very, very similar, if not the same as the Elm architecture. Elm is a functional language. It's got roots in ML and Haskell, and it compiles down to JavaScript. Now it's got a very opinionated pattern that you tend to follow when you build Elm applications. So here on the right pane, I have an Elm application open. This is an application that I built about two years ago. It's just a very simple to do application. And I'm going to walk you through the very general idea of this application because this is the application that we're going to implement inside of Flutter today. So here we have our main entry point and the main entry point opens up this app function and the app function takes in a model, an update and a view function. So we compose these three functions to essentially build our application. Down here we have our model function and we have a type alias to define how our model should look and then the model function itself is actually just an initialization of this model data structure. Because it's a to-do application we're saying that the to-do field is going to be an empty string and then the to-dos list which is a list of string will just be an empty list. Things start to sort of get interesting when we get down to the update function and to the message union type here. So this is what's called a union type. It's a type annotation where you combine multiple different types together. So the message type can either be an update to do type, an add to do type, a remove item type, a remove all type, and a clear input type. Down here in our update function, we take in our message and our model, and then we run pattern matching on the message, and we try to find, okay, well, what is the type of message that's being sent into this function? If we get an update to do type, then we want to take a piece of text that comes with the update to do type and pass it into our to do field in the model. Then we have our add to do case where we're just appending this new to do onto our model to do's list. We've got a remove item case where we're removing the specific to do that we want to remove from our list. We've got a remove all case where we're actually just creating a new empty list and then replacing our old list with it. And then we've got a cleared input list where we're taking that to do field and just turning it into a empty string. Some of you guys might see a very familiar pattern in how things are structured here. And that's because the Redux architecture is actually based off of the Elm architecture. So with Redux, rather than having messages, you have what are called actions. And when you dispatch an action, it does something. So in this case, our messages are like actions in Redux. We dispatch an action from the view to the update function. And this then gets pattern matched and then something happens to the state of our application. Down here we have our view function. For those of you who are familiar with React, this is very similar to a piece of JSX. So the view function allows us to build out HTML elements inside of the Elm language. So you can see here we've got a div object and then each of the HTML objects inside of Elm take in two lists. So this div object has a class of Jumbotron and then it has this like style sheet inside of it. And then inside of the div, we also have an input item. And the input item is a type of text and it's attached to the update to do message. And then there's also a on mouse enter event, which is attached to the clear input message. Then below the input, we have two buttons. One of them is bound to the add to do message. And then the other one is bound to the remove all message. And then finally, below and at the bottom, we have another function which is just called to-do list, which takes in our model.todos list and builds out another piece of HTML. So it essentially just builds out a dynamic list based on how many to-dos are inside of the model. So Elm is a cool language, but how does that relate to Flutter? Some bright individual decided to take the Elm architecture and bring it to Dart and to Flutter through use of a library. 
And the library in question is called Dart T, T being short for the Elm architecture. So to get started with Dart T, we want to bring in the latest version. And the current version at the time of this recording is 0.5.0. So that's the version that I will be using. Now we can come back into our main.dart file and actually import the Dart T library. So just package Dart T backslash Dart T.dart. One of the main complaints I tend to get when I start to teach people Flutter is that it's too nested and it can be a little bit overwhelming. And some people tend to equate it to sort of like a callback hell like you would see in JavaScript. Well, with this Dart T library, we can really cut back on the nesting because we get to split up our application logic into the three or four different parts that are present inside of an Elm application. So here we have some boilerplate. We have our main function. We do still have a stateless widget that we need to use as the root widget for our application, but everything else will be extracted out into various different pieces. First, let's start with the model for this application. So I mentioned before that I wanted to create a to-do app that was very similar to the one that, that we looked at. If you guys remember, the model was just two fields. We had a field called to do, which was just a string. And then we had a field called to do's, which was a list of string type. So we can create a class called model and we can create two final fields. One will be a string called to do and the other one will be a list of strings called to do's. And then we can create a basic constructor, which will take in both of these. We can also add a copy with function to this class. So this keeps the consistency and it makes it very easy for us to change the various different values as we're moving through the state of our application. All right, so now that we have our class model defined, let's create the messages that we're going to need for our update function. So while Dart does not have algebraic union types like Elm does, we can sort of create these union types by creating an abstract class and then implementing that abstract class into the various different messages that we want. So after creating that abstract class message, we can now implement an add to do message, which will implement the message class, a remove to do message, which will also implement the message class, and finally a clear to do's method. So this is not exactly like the other application that we built because there were two other messages in that application, but we do not need those messages because we can manually do those things without having to keep everything very pure. We want to define the various fields that we're going to need for each of these messages. So for add to do, we want to have access to a string so that we can move that string from the dispatching of this message to our model. So for add to do, we create our string, I'll just call it to do, and then we'll just pass it through the constructor. With the remove to do message, rather than finding the to do by the actual string that's inside of the list, we'll do it by index. So instead of putting in another string, we'll just put in an integer and we'll call it index and then we'll pass it into the constructor. The clears to do's message doesn't actually need to have anything inside of it because all we need to do is dispatch it and then call clear on the model list and that will then clear everything that's inside of our model. Now that we have our messages implemented, we can create our init function. And we do this by using a type called UPD, which is just short for update. So UPD takes in a model and a message, and this init function just sets up our base model. So we put in an empty string for the to-do, and then we put in an empty list for the to-do's list. Now we can create the actual update function. And again, we use the UPD type and we pass in the model and the message type. And for this function, we pass in message and model so that we have access to both of these inside of the function. Rather than just using pattern matching, we can create a bunch of if and else if statements. So we can say, okay, well, if the message is of type add to do, then we wanna do something Else, if the message is of type remove to do, then we want to do something. And if the message is of type clear to do's, we want to do something. 
After all these if else checks, we can just return a UPD with our model inside of it. So again, this is very similar to Redux, and I'm sure you guys have seen this type of pattern before in some of the Flutter Redux applications as well. For our first if statement, we'll return a UPD, and inside of it we'll call model copy with. We'll pass in message.todo into the todo field, and then for todos, we'll take our model.todos, and then we'll use cascade to add message.todo to this list. For our remove to do message, we can create another UPD, pass in model.copy with, and because to do is an optional parameter, we do not have to specify it. And we'll take our to do's list, we'll put in our model.todos, and then we'll use cascade to remove the to do at the index that we're passing into the remove to do class. So we just call message.index to get that number, and then we remove it from our list and then we return the resulting list back to our model to-dos. For our final message, again, we'll return a UPD. This time we'll go model copy with. For to-do, we'll pass in an empty string. And then for to-dos, we'll take model.todos, and then we'll use cascade to clear the entire list. So this takes care of every single type of mutation that we have inside of our application state. Now let's create the view for our application. The view function for this application returns a widget. It takes in our build context. Then it takes in a dispatch with a message inside of it. This is just a function that we can use to dispatch a message. And it takes in the model. At the top of this function, we can define a text editing controller to actually manipulate the input box that we're going to use to add our to-dos, and then we can create the scaffold that we want to wrap our application inside of. So here we'll create an app bar, then we'll have a center in the body, we'll put a column inside of it, and then inside of this column we'll have our text form field, we'll have some buttons, and we'll have a list view which will build out the list of our to-dos. So here first we have a center with a text form field inside of it. Then we bind our controller to the controller of this text form field. We could also, if we wanted to, make it so that on submit we actually do call one of our messages. But in this case I want to use buttons instead. Below our text form field we can create a raised button and we'll give it a child of a text widget which says add to do and then the on pressed will call to our dispatch function and inside of this dispatch we'll create a new add to do object and we'll pass in the controller.txt so this controller.txt gets put into this to do field inside of our add to do object which then gets used inside of the update function here so i'm actually going to wrap these buttons inside of a row and below our first button, we'll create another raised button, which will be called clear to do's. On pressed for this one, we will call our clear to do's object, which will then clear the entire to do's list. Now below our row, we can create a flexible with a list view builder inside of it. And this will be the list that we use to hold all of our to do's. Now down inside of our list view builder, we'll create the item count, which is just model.todos.length, so the length of the list. And then we can create the item builder, which just takes in the context and then the actual index of the current item that we're iterating through. And for each of these, we'll create a center with a row inside of it. And then inside of this row, we'll have various things which will define how our to-dos look. So here inside of the row, the first item we'll create will be a container with some padding and then inside of it we'll have a text widget which will call to our model.todos list and pass in the index to get the actual item. Then finally to add our final message to our view we create an icon button. We pass in the icon that we want in this case just icon delete which is just a trash can and then the on pressed will just be an anonymous function which calls dispatch instantiates a remove to do object and passes in the index so that it knows which to do to remove. And that's actually all that we needed to write for the logic of this application. So we've set up the view, 
we've set up the model and we've set up the update. Now we just need to tie them together and make sure that they get put into our root widget. We can do this by creating a new program object at the top of our application inside of our main function. So we say final program and the program takes in the model, the message, and then the subscriptions. And I haven't really talked about the subscriptions because this application doesn't have any. And then we want to pass in for the first three parameters, the init function, the update function, and then the view function. And then we have an optional parameter called subscription and we can pass in null for this one because there is no subscription function in our application. Inside of our root widget, we can take and create a final program program then pass that into the constructor so that we can pass this program into our root widget. And then inside of our build function inside of the material application, we'll specify the title and the theme. And then for home, we'll call program.build, which will then build out our application as it would normally with any other Flutter application. All right, so here is our application. It just looks like a very basic to do application. We can click in the text box, type something in, say test, and then hit add to do. And it actually adds it into our list here. We can click the clear to do's button, which will clear all the to do's in theory. And if we do, it does in fact do what we expected it to. And if we just put in a bunch of random to do's here, just to test things, we can see that in fact, if we push like a trash can, it will delete the to do's. And then if we click the clear to do's button, it also does just clear the entire list. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.